Um, in closing, um, I just want to say that a freight rail strike, it would devastate the supply chain and it would literally shut down uh, the country. Again, estimates are that the strike would cost the economy up to $2 billion per day during a very busy holiday season. This threat comes only months after President Biden celebrated avoiding a railway strike, remember? Now the president and his cabinet have given up on leading. Um, they've retreated in failure, and they've kicked this problem to Congress for us to decide. The terms of the tentative agreement found in this resolution are more than fair for railroad workers. 24% increase in wages, 24%, and it's retroactive. Employee contributions to health care, it capped at 15%. Um, this is supported by the, the freight railroads, by shippers, and 8 out of 12 of the labor unions involved. 8 out of 12. This was a very negotiated uh, proposal. Um, it had bipartisan uh, momentum that was building uh, for this resolution. Unfortunately, the majority decided to play political games with the economy, and they went back on the president and speaker, the speaker's stated support for implementing the terms of the tentative agreement. This is beyond bad faith. This is just simply reckless. And I want to point out that what we are debating right now and what we will vote on with this is the tentative agreement. That's the original agreement. We will go on next to vote on, uh, vote on the, extra, um, the extra benefits. But despite the speaker and the president's decision to cower the progressive uh, demands by having a second vote on the revised agreement, I do plan to support this resolution, this one right now that we're debating, to implement the tentative agreement as it was debated, as it was negotiated, in an effort to stop an economically ruinous uh, rail shutdown, and I would urge my colleagues uh, to do the same. With that, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields.